Welcome back to the next lecture in the course Basics of Mechanical Engineering 1. Professor Ram Kumar has discussed multiple facets of the basics of mechanical engineering in engineering mechanics in the last three weeks. Now, hopefully you have submitted the assignments 1 and 2. Now I would like to take tutorial session on the topics which were discussed in the week 1, 2 and 3. Regarding week 1, the topics which were discussed were units and dimensions, scalars and vectors, statics, kinetics and kinematics and I will also have some numerical problems on laws of motion, inertia, moment of inertia and momentum. Let us have a quick look on the units and dimensions, basic formulas and relationships that you discussed in the first week. There are multiple units, seven fundamental units were discussed like length, mass, time, temperature, electric current, luminous intensity and amount of substance and is also a fundamental unit now with all of them having their respective units. For example, length as a meter or mass in kilogram, time in seconds or so. Supplementary units were also discussed like plane angles, alpha, beta, theta, phi, which are represented in radian. Solid angle omega is T radian. This is also one of the tables which was given in the week one itself, the certain relationships between certain physical quantities and their formulas and their dimensions which rep are represented in M L and T forms. For example, force is equal to mass into acceleration for which SI units are Newton and its dimensional formula is m power 1, L power 1, T power minus 2. And for work which is force into distance, its dimensional formula is m power 1, L power 2, T power minus 2 and the SI units are joules. These are all discussed energy, power, pressure, stress, momentum, moment of force, impulse which is force into time, impulse is also change in momentum and impulse is having SI units as Newton seconds. Strain, change in dimension, this was discussed in the further coming weeks, it has no units because it is just change in the length. Modulus of elasticity, stress per unit strain which is m power 1, l power minus 1, t power minus 2 which is Newton per meter square which is equivalent to force. Now let me come to the certain small problems for example, for equation S is equal to ut plus half a t square which is an equation of the motion. The dimensional analysis is method of checking consistency of equations. All the terms in a physical meaningful equation must have the same dimensions. This is the principle of dimension analysis. For this example, if we say S is displacement, which is having dimensional formula as only L, L power 1, then U T would be initial velocity into time, initial velocity is L per unit time multiplied by time and time and time cancels. For this again we have the remaining dimensional formula as L and half a t square that is acceleration into the square of time. Here you know now acceleration is length per unit square of the time. This multiplied by time square gives us the remaining unit as L which means this is L is equal to L 
plus L in the dimensional form in the equations. That means the all terms here have same dimensions. This is the crux of having a dimensional analysis and how do we develop the dimensional analysis, how do we learn it more, there were questions in the forum as well that how do we learn it more. This tutorial session would have some numerical problems which would be having some solutions to the different dimensional relationships. Let us go through them. Now, I have a problem statement, convert a speed of 90 kilometers per hour into meter per second. But this is a problem statement of just of a conversion of units. Just to convert, we know 1 kilometer, it is a just a kid's play. 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meters and we also know 1 hour is equal to 3600 seconds. So, that means 90 kilometer per hour is equal to 90 into 1000 meters by 3600 seconds, this is equal to 90 into 5 by 18 meter per second, which is equal to 25 meter per second. Here, you might have also been using this multiple times, this 5 by 18 is a conversion factor for kilometers per hour to meters per second. But this is just a conversion factor that I am showing here. So, this only means that if you convert the units, the dimension formula still remains same. So, dimensions for this kilometer per hour is again length t minus 1 and this is also length t minus 1. So, dimension formula remains same. So, there could be questions uh, in your uh, final exam that what is the dimensional difference or what is the dimensional formula uh, if we change kilometer per hour to meter per second, if we change units from SI to CGS or so. So, dimensional formula should remain same, that is the major understanding here. Now, there is another problem statement where we evaluate each of the following and express with SI units having an appropriate prefix. So, because we are discussing units and dimension, so this is regarding the SI units conversion. So, we need to have SI formulas or put them into SI form. So, you can see it is 50 milli Newton into 6 giga Newton it is Newton square. This is 400 millimeter into 0 0.6 mega Newton square. Third one is 45 mega Newton cube is greater than 900 gigagram. So, let us see what are their solutions if we convert them or put them into the SI units only. So, we need to only remember one thing if it is written k Newton square this always means k into Newton square. That means, if it is this k is 10 raise to power 3, this is equal to 10 raise to power 3 Newton square. So, this turns to 10 raise to power 6 Newton square. We will use this principle. This again I will call it as a conversion principle. So, 50 milli Newton into 60 giga Newton. So, let me put into a form this is equal to 50 milli is 10 raise to power minus 3 Newton, right. The second factor multiplied by this is 6 giga Newton, 6 into giga, giga is 10 raise to power 9 Newton. This is equal to, I just multiply 50 and 6, this is equal to 300 and I then see 10 raise to power minus 3, 10 raise to power 
9 if I multiply these two this gives me 9 minus 3 that is 10 raised to power 6 and Newton and Newton this is Newton square or I can even put it as because I need to put it in the SI units form I will just say this is equal to 300 into 10 power 6 Newton square because I need kilo Newton or kilo Newton square in the SI units. So, I will require 1 kilo Newton here and I will put here 10 raise to power 3 Newton. So, this is a unit, unit identity once again 1 kilo Newton by 10 raise to power 3 Newton. This again because it is Newton square once more 1 kilo Newton into 10 raise to power 3 Newton. So, this is Newton square if I try to now cross or cancel the denominator and the numerator this Newton could be cancelled with this square and this Newton will be cancelled with the whole n square. So, I am left with 300 into 10 raise to power 6 in the denominator I have 1 by 10 cube into 1 by 10 cube kilo Newton square which is equal to if I cross it this 10 raise to power 3 and this crosses the 10 raise to power 6. So, I am having final result as 300 kilo Newton square. So, this is SI units. We have now converted the given relationship which was the multiplication of two factors that is 50 milli Newton into 60 giga Newtons into kilo Newton square. So, this is into the SI units. Similarly, let me see the second term which was given which also had two factors. So, it has 400 millimeter that is length into 0 0.6 mega Newton square. We have to again remember the same relationship or the principle I mentioned in the previous it is if it is kilo Newton square it is the square of the units or the factor which is given here. So, this becomes 400 millimeter I will convert millimeter into meter into 10 raise to power minus 3 meter SI units are required. So, meter is an SI unit into 0 0.6 mega Newton, mega Newton is 10 raise to power 6 is mega I have Newton here and square of this. If I try to solve it further it is 400 into 10 raise to power minus 3 meter into 0 0.6. 0 0.6 if I take a square of 0 0.6 I will put is as 0 0.36. 0 0.36 10 raise to power 6 square is 2 times of the power it is 10 raise to power 12 and I have Newton square. So, again multiplying the factors I just as I did before I will just multiply 400 by 0 0.36 I will multiply the metric units here take it 10 to the power 3 multiply by 10 to the power 12 and also meter and Newton square would be taken together. So, this gives me 400 into 0 0.36 36 into 4 is 144 144 400. So, it is 144 exact no decimal place 144 then 10 raise to power 3 and 10 raise to power 12. So, this gives me 12 minus 3 10 raise to power 9 meter and Newton square. So, I have meter Newton square yes this is now an SI unit. So, 144 this 10 raise to power 9 could be put as giga meter giga meter Newton square. So, I will do it in a way as I did in the previous expression this 144 giga meter could be put as 10 raise to power 9 
meter into Newton square. This is equal to 144 into 10 raised to power 9 meter into Newton square. So, let me have my mega Newton here 1 mega Newton by 10 raised to power 6 Newton once and because it is Newton square again I will have 1 mega Newton by 10 raised to power 6 Newton. So, this Newton crosses with the Newton square numerator are cancelled. So, I got it here 10 raised to power 6 was down this is 10 raised to power 12 10 raised to power 12 and this is equal to 144 into 10 raised to power 9 into 10 raised to power minus 12 meter into mega Newton square. This is equal to 0 0.144 because this is 10 raised to power minus 3, 3 decimals back from 144, 0 0.144 meter into mega Newton square. So, this is again an SI unit that I have gotten. For the third expression which is given 45 mega Newton cube is greater than 900 gigagram. So, I will just put it in a this form 45 mega Newton cube by 900 gigagram. This is equal to 45 into 10 raised to power 6 Newton cube by 900 into gigagram. Giga is 10 raised to power 9 gram. To have that in a kg kilograms, it could be 900 into 10 raised to power 6 kilograms. And on the numerator, I could have again 45 into 10 raised to power 6 multiplied by 3 is equal to 10 raised to power 18. Newton cube. This turns to 50 into 10 raised to power 9 Newton cube per kg. This is equal to 50 into 10 raised to power 9. I will have Newton cube here and I need kilo Newton, 1 kilo Newton by 10 raise to power 3 Newton cube into 1 by kg. This is equal to, this is 50 here, this is equal to 50 kilo Newton cube per unit kg. So, this is SI units conversion only. Let us now try to see some problems on the uh, dimensional analysis as I mentioned dimensional analysis practices are to be taken. So, let us see this problem statement check the correctness of the following formula by dimensional analysis. We need to see force the dimensional formula for the force should be equal to mv square by r. So, we know force is equal to mv square by r right. So, LHS left hand side is equal to force which has a dimension formula as m power 1, l power 1 and t power minus 2. Force is equal to mass into acceleration as you say the same way we can put it in there. And for right hand side I have m v square, m v square by r. So, m v square would be mass power 1 and v square is length per unit time square by r, r is just one length. This is equal to m 1 l 2 t power minus 2, this is o by L here relation. So, this becomes multiplied by L minus 1. 
so this turns to be m1 l2 minus 1 is l1 t minus 2 which means left hand side dimensions are equal to the dimensions of right hand side therefore the term is correct we have to write that full statement the term is correct let us see the second t is equal to 2 pi l by g this relation here left hand side we have a simple time as a unit which is nothing but this is equal to m0 l0 t power 1 right hand side this is equal to under root of the length by the acceleration due to gravity so length we know l is equal to l only dimensions and acceleration due to gravity that is g i am solving for right hand side g is equal to length per unit square of time that is l1 t minus 2 so i have under root of the dimensions so i have to put it in this way right hand side is equal to the dimension for right hand side are under root of the length per unit acceleration due to gravity so this gives me l by l into t minus 2 l and n crosses t goes up this is equal to under root of t, t square and this is nothing but is equal to t power 1 so here also we have t power 1 therefore we know now we can put it in the same way m0 l0 t power 1 therefore left hand size dimensions is equal to right hand side i have to put dimensions word here dimensions is equal to right hand side dimensions therefore the relationship is correct i have to write the statement once again let me come to the next topic so with this some practice in the dimensional analysis i have taken and the conversion into si units these numericals are taken uh, here I will also now take the scalars and vector which was discussed in the week 1 in the coming numericals. Scalar, a quantity that has only magnitude such as mass or temperature that is scalar this is discussed in detail week 1, a quantity that has both magnitude and direction for example displacement, velocity is a vector. These definitions were taken, let us try to understand it further vector addition formula we have the resultant vector for a plus b for example two vectors are there a and b in their different directions this is a this is b so i can maybe join them and try to complete a parallelogram a line parallel to a and parallel to b so this is my point of contact p so this resultant could be if I try to draw A and B here, this is A, B, A, B and I have completed this parallelogram. Here I could have my relation R is equal to A plus B. Where is R here? R is given here. This is R which is the diagonal this is a plus b so r is the resultant vector a is the first vector b is second vector similarly for subtraction uh, suppose uh, we have again mm, the two vectors as maybe a and b because i am going to subtract it i will take the b in the negative direction this is minus b and a in the positive direction only a. Now, I will complete my parallelogram. This is my point P. The resultant vector would be from the 
starting point of the vector to the point P. So, I will have my resultant here. This is R. So, this R is equal to A minus P. This is parallelogram law. We can also have a triangle law. Triangle law is nothing, uh, but we only draw a triangle in place of a parallelogram. We draw a triangle, we draw A like this. This is A in its direction, and B is drawn in its negative direction and here we will have resultant R. So, this one is parallelogram, this is parallelogram law and this is triangle law. So, let us see uh, the scalar and the vector product as we discussed uh, in the week 1 itself. The scalar or the dot product of vectors, a resultant scalar product or dot product of two vectors is always a scalar quantity. Consider two vectors A and B, the scalar product is calculated as a product of magnitudes of A, B and cosines of the angle between these vectors. That is the magnitude of A into magnitude of B into cos of alpha. Alpha is the angle between two vectors. If I am having two vectors, I am only putting magnitude here, this small a, a and b. So, this is my alpha. Here it is given magnitude, magnitude alpha is angle. Cross product is a cross b, where it is magnitude of a into magnitude of b into sine of the angle between them. Here what we do? we we'll try to get the sign of the angles between them. So, this is uh, the cross product or vector product. Let us try to solve a few numericals to understand this further. Determine the magnitude of the component force F in a figure and the magnitude of the resultant force F r. If F r is directed along the positive axis. So, this is positive y axis given and we have resultant f r in this direction. So, we will try to apply the parallelogram law or way or method to add the vectors here. So, I have f in this direction and I have 200 pounds load in this direction. So, angles are given 45 degrees and 30 degrees. So, if I try to complete my parallelogram, I have my f and this load and I try to draw my parallelogram. This is vector f, this angle is 30 degrees, this is resultant f r, this angle is 45 degrees and if this is 30 the remaining angle would be 60. So, let me try to calculate the F r. First of all, let me try to see the magnitude of the vector F. So, I have F by sin 60. You can see this angle is 60 here. So, F by sin 60 is equal to 200 pounds by a sine of 45 degrees. You can see by the alternate angles law, this angle is also 45 degree, right. If this is 60, this is 45. So, this turns to be 75 degree. 75 degree, if I draw a line here, so this can also be divided into 75 is equal to 45 plus 30 degrees, this angle. So, here I can solve it directly. So, sin 60 and sin 45. So, I have f is equal to 200 into sin 60 by sin 45 degrees, these many pounds, which turns to be 245 pounds. Now, to find f r, 
we now know f r by sin 75 degrees is equal to 200 by sin 45 degrees. I am talking about the same triangle. You see this triangle I am trying to draw it once again. This is my f r and this angle is 45 degree, this angle is 60 degree. this is 75. This give me resultant F r magnitude as 200 into sin 75 by sin 45. This is equal to 273 pounds. So, this is application of the parallelogram and the triangle law to find the resultant magnitude of a vector. Now, there is another problem statement where it is given the magnitude 6 Newton and 10 Newton are inclined at an angle of 60 degrees with each other. There are two forces. Calculate the magnitude of the resultant and the angle made by resultant with 6 and 4, 6 and 4 that is there. So, let me try to draw this triangle two forces are inclined at an angle of around 60 degrees. Let me say Q and P, they are inclined at an angle 60 degrees, right. Using a parallelogram law, I will try to find this resultant R and this angle phi they are asking, their resultant and the angle made by the resultant with 6 and force. So, 6 and force is my P force and Q is 10 N. So, I just have P is equal to 6 Newton, Q is equal to 10 Newton and angle is equal to 60 degrees. So, resultant R another way to calculate it directly it is it is P square plus Q square plus 2 P Q cos theta. This is equal to 6 square plus 10 square plus 2 into P into Q into cos theta that is cos 60. This result is under root of 196 is equal to 14 Newton. So, let phi be the angle, this phi angle that I have phi out here between P and R. So, angle between P and R is equal to question mark. Here I will use the relation tan of the unknown angle phi is equal to q into sin theta phi p plus q of cos theta. That is tan phi is equal to tan sin 60 degrees by value of p is 6, q is 10 cos theta is cos 60. This is equal to 5 under root 3 by 11. Using your calculator or your log table, you can find the value of phi. We can have phi is equal to tan inverse of 5 under root 3 by 11. So, this is the value of the angle. You can put it in this way itself or you can solve and try to get the angle in degrees. So, you can see I am just using the solutions of triangles theory here to solve these problems. So, this is a simple problem statement here where magnitude of A is 6, magnitude of B is 3 and 
angle between them is 60 degrees. So, we know a dot p is equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b into the cos of alpha. This is simply 6 into 3 into cos of 60 degrees which is equal to 6 into 3 cos 60 as we know is under root of 1 by 4 which is 1 by 2. So, this is equal to 9 that means I got a dot p is equal to 9. This is a very simple relationship. Next I am keeping 2, 3 examples for you to solve. In this slides you will get the solutions, but it is suggested that you try to understand the problem. You try to uh, solve and try to get the solution and then only refer the lecture notes where the solution of these are given. So, this is the first one is the components of the vector. 3 i j minus 4 k is one vector, second vector is 8 i minus 8 j plus 4 k. So, we have to prove that these vectors are perpendicular, just the solution would be given, try to solve it and get the solution. Another problem statement is the cross product of two vectors a and b, we have to find if magnitudes are 5 and 10 and respective angles between them is 30 degrees. I am not talking about the cross product a cross b, this is equal to a dot p dot sin of alpha. This you can actually solve, this is very simple solution sin of 30 degrees into 5 into 10. Try to solve it and you will get solutions there. Another problem statement that I have here is uh, find the area of a parallelogram whose adjacent sides are a 4i plus 2j minus 3k, b 2i plus j minus 4k. The area is always a cross product if you remember area is a into b. This cross product you will try to find and try to find the solution, the solution will be given in the final lecture notes. So, with this I am uh, closing this lecture, I will try to talk about the statistics, kinetics and uh, kinematics and moment of inertia in the second part of the tutorial one. Thank you. Thank you.